It is your boys, Vic, Toby, and JJ coming at you with a, with a little intellectual Sidemen React. We're gonna do some learning today, some mm. theoretical right. dilemmas right here. What happens if Yellowstone goes up tomorrow? Super volcano so vibes. It's, it's, yeah, it's, that's what I say, it's a volcano. Yeah, I'm, mm. I'm sure they'll take us through it in the video. Maybe, maybe this Let's is- Let's just get straight into yeah, it. Yeah, this is gonna be some Carpe Diem kind of vibes, you know? Live your oh, life to the yeah, best. Deep Let's get deep it. Breath, deep <laughs> breath. From the Grand Canyon to the Rocky Mountains to the beaches on two of the world's oceans and beyond, the list just goes USA on. USA do have a good, you know. There's so many beautiful parts of so the United big, States so that the country much. established yeah. its own National Park Service back in 1916 in an effort to help maintain and protect them. And in total, the service is now in charge of 63 of these protected areas, and when combined together, they cover an area of 85 million square kilometers, is which is roughly the same size as the entire country of Germany. Jeez. One of the most famous of these U.S. national parks is Yellowstone. I really want to go to Yellowstone. It's located in the northwestern corner of the state Will of you Wyoming, with some overlap in Montana and Maybe Idaho. Not. And Maybe you want not. to go to Yellowstone. Really pretty. You'll see. It's like national. It's meant park. to be really beautiful. Yeah. Hiking. I, I can go on a hike. Hiking. <laughs> <laughs> Yellowstone. I really happy. Idaho, and it covers roughly nine thousand square kilometers of land. Yellowstone is well known for its abundance of wildlife ah! and its many geothermal features, particularly Old Faithful. A geyser that regularly blasts water 50 full meters into the air approximately every 90 insane. minutes. Over 4 million minutes. people visit the park to take in all of these sites every year. But Yellowstone is harboring a dangerous secret. It's located just atop a slowly ticking time bomb. The largest supervolcano, not only on the North American continent, but also anywhere on the planet right now. Uh. And it has a bit of a troubled past. You see, the Yellowstone caldera that we know today was actually formed by several titanic volcanic eruptions that took place a long, long time ago. Mm. One of them took place 2.1 million years ago, another that took place 1.3 million years ago, and the most recent taking place approximately 664,000 oh, years ago. <laughs> Long before Homo sapiens. So you're saying oh, it's, so it's, it's due? It's, yeah, mean, it's due soon. What, we got 600,000? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 600,000, 600,000, 600. Ah, shit. <laughs> Oh, well, shit. Well, 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 ever arisen over in wow. Africa. The last of those that surrounds the Yellowstone Lake ended up ejecting so much material during the blast that it left a 55 by 80 kilometer depression in the ground that we now know today as the current Yellowstone caldera. Mm -hmm. And each of these three colossal events is what is known geologically as a super eruption meaning that on the Volcano Explosivity Index, they would all be listed as a magnitude 8 or higher, and at a minimum, at least 1,000 cubic kilometers of material was ejected during the most recent blast. Which is, well, insane to comprehend, because that would basically be enough volcanic ash, lava, and other material to bury the entire state of Texas one and a half meters deep. If we look at the geological history of Earth, we know that on average, the planet suffers from one of these supervolcanic blasts roughly once every 100,000 years. The most recent such occurrence was the New Zealand Lake Topo volcano, which blew up approximately 26,500 years ago. But by looking at the history of the Yellowstone eruption specifically, yeah. a disturbing <laughs> pattern begins to look like it's emerging. <laughs> the second most recent explosion took place about 800,000 years after the third most recent, while the most recent one happened about 636,000 years after that one. And as mentioned previously, this most recent event happened 664,000 years ago, which is 28,000 years longer than the time between these two most recent explosions. This is one of the biggest reasons why Yellowstone in particular often receives so much attention in the global press. However, experts and scientists have repeatedly assured the public that an eruption at Yellowstone any time in the near future is exceedingly unlikely okay. and the volcano's current status is dormant. I'll take the word for it. Based on over 30 years worth of research, the evidence gathered suggests that while, yeah, it's theoretically possible, 
a mega eruption isn't likely to happen any time within the next 10 thousand years fine by me. Oh, cool. okay. keep in mind yeah, that yeah. on the geologic timeline it took roughly eight hundred thousand years between event number three and event two which is one hundred and thirty six thousand years longer than we've gone now since event one but that's not really any fun if yellowstone defied all of the odds and blew up today really anyway how bad would it actually be uh, uh, this I is fun think about that <laughs> This is fun. <laughs> it's not fun if it doesn't yeah. blow up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's oh, see what's God. fun then. The whole Yellowstone volcanic system itself is huge. Like, it's way bigger than you probably think it is. For example, the magma chamber that lies underneath the national park today is estimated to be a single connected chamber that is 60 kilometers long, 29 kilometers wide, and 8 kilometers deep and holds an absolutely absurd amount of molten lava. This chamber is fed by a gigantic uh -huh. plume of molten rock that wells up from hundreds of miles beneath the Earth's surface. And fascinatingly, as this magma rises up into the chamber and cools, the ground above will periodically rise and fall. And because of this, the elevation of ground within the Yellowstone Park oh. will fluctuate up or down by a few inches a year. Mad. Now, before any massive eruption would take place, it would very likely be preceded by a huge amount of seismic activity. Basically a warning sign that something really bad was about to happen. Many There's seismologists like estimate that there could America. be substantial like, earthquakes preceding any blast at Yellowstone that would last for weeks or even months beforehand as rock below gets broken up by magma as it surges further and further up towards the surface. Here, pressure would continue building and building and building and with increasing intensity until, with nowhere left to go, the magma would explode through the ground in a cataclysmic eruption, with debris getting flung as high as 24 kilometers up into the oh, stratosphere. Shortly afterwards, the lava flows themselves would engulf the surrounding area and anywhere inside a range of 65 kilometers from the epicenter would be in danger of becoming literally buried in lava, which is basically the entire territory think? of the National yeah. Park itself. Beyond this immediate danger of burning, the blast would eject a thousand cubic kilometers of material up into the sky, creating a type of umbrella cloud expanding evenly in all Bro, directions America's and fuck. darkening the skies <laughs> hey. over most of the North American continent. Jesus. This cloud would rain down toxic volcanic ash across the entire mainland United States. Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah will, however, experience the most significant devastation and will probably be almost completely buried with up to a what? meter thick of hot volcanic ash. Jeez. Denver, ah. Salt Lake City, and Boise will be severely damaged or just outright destroyed. Wow. Meanwhile, across the Midwest, Nevada, and Southern Alberta, there would still be inches of ash coating everything in sight. Even the Atlantic and Pacific coasts would likely see a small dusting, although much of it would be highly dependent on the time of year and weather patterns involved. Basically, if you're looking at this map, everything in blue would be completely wiped out. Everything in purple would be highly damaged. Everything in orange would be sort of damaged. And everything in yellow would be mildly damaged. The North American continent would take a pretty significant bruise. But the worst part of all of this would obviously be the terrible toll that it would take on human life. With a full meter of ash possibly being poured down upon you and your city, even if you are not close enough to see the volcano, it could still possibly kill not only you, but also plants, animals, and even crush buildings with the sheer weight of dense ash deposits. No way. Even just a few inches of ash can completely ruin farmland, clog up roadways, and create serious respiratory issues for large amounts of the population. Hmm. Not to mention that it would take out key infrastructure, contaminate water supplies, down power lines, prevent nearly all air travel on the entire continent, and even take out electrical transformers. And this is the fun bit. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> what? And this is oh, the fun yeah. bit. <laughs> Fuck Bruh. Also, hold up a second. Is that not London? 
that picture. Wait, hold up. That, that's London. That's, that's, bro, that's the Thames, Gherkin that's, there. That's, that's mate, the telephone mate, that's building. That's the Tower of London. That's the Tower of London, bro. Tower of London's fine. I don't know what you're talking about. We got power. <laughs> Take out electrical transformers, which would bring America's power grid to a complete and utter halt. What could be even worse is that the ash would likely wipe out the entire Midwest's me? crop of corn and soybeans and could even poison the farmland for an entire generation. This would make food production within the United States severely crippled, and America would likely have to rely on food imports from That's other mental. continents in order to survive. The knock-on effects but are actually the insane. absolute chaos mm -hmm. going on across yeah. North America, a volcanic eruption this big would also have a major impact on the global climate and affect everybody who lives on this planet in some way. Man. You see, volcanoes oh, can emit yeah. sulfur aerosols that are capable of reflecting sunlight back away from the Earth, which causes the climate to cool down. Could be a good For thing. example, most recently, <laughs> when Mount cooling. Pintabu That's erupted good. in the Philippines <laughs> in 1991, <laughs> it's estimated that it cooled the Sell planet the by an entire one degree <laughs> for at least a few years. And that's not to mention the Great Tambora eruption, which occurred in Indonesia in 1815. That eruption, which was rated as a Category 7 on the Explosivity Index, is believed to have cooled the planet enough to damage crops around the world, what? potentially even causing several severe famines in certain oh, areas. So there was even snowfall during the month of June in the eastern half of the United States that year, as it became known as the year without a summer. Wow, These boy. eruptions, however, were relatively tiny events wow. when compared to what a supervolcanic Yellowstone eruption might look like. Although it's hard to say with any kind of certainty, scientists estimate that with the amount of material that would be ejected into the atmosphere, the planet might cool by as oh, much no. as yeah, that's that's yeah, that's full that's degrees that, that might be for an it. entire that might be decade following a cataclysmic decade. eruption at Yellowstone. That might be curtains. Obviously, a change that in the climate the that huge would cause a global catastrophe as crops around the world would be affected likely endangering the lives of hundreds of millions of people and doing untold amounts of damage. FEMA, the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, even published a rough estimate on what it thought the total damage cost to the United States would be in the event that Yellowstone ever actually blew. In that report, they estimated that it would they cost roughly $3 trillion dollars yeah. in damages, or almost 14% of the entire... Yeah, I swear... Um... Bezos will be able to sort that. Uh, trillion? No. Nah. Does he have a trillion? Nah. No. <laughs> no. Oh, shit. Yeah, so my bad, my bad. Well, he, you know, he, he, got, no. he got a 20th. He, he got, a, sorry, he's got a fifth of a trillion. But it's more than likely not going to actually happen during any right. of our lifetimes unless one of you becomes immortal. Because if you look at the frequency of the last three big eruptions, the odds of one happening in any given year are roughly 0 0.0001 percent, don't like those odds. which is actually lower than the odds <laughs> of civilization getting wiped out by an asteroid. Uh, so I don't this like those isn't odds really either. a problem that you have to worry too much about right now. All right, yo, oh, my guy it? Elon Musk, yo, SpaceX, come through, bro. We're gonna need some people on Mars. Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my! Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Well. There you have it. Um, everything's in a very fragile balance, so we should appreciate it. Um, I'm that shook. Is, that is... <laughs> I'm shook. I guess that's it. That's it for the day.